Hey everyone, how you doing today? We are the Real Estate Ladies of North Atlanta, Mary Ellen Vinock and Sue Jennings. And today we're going to be talking about how to smoothly buy one house and sell another house. So this is a great topic that people always are confused on. How can I do this? And how can we get this done? So Sue, uh, what are we going to talk about today? Like specifically? Well, we're going to talk about a lot of different things, but ultimately what Mary Ellen and I do is we tailor uh, what the process that we're going to talk about here to everybody's individual situation, because everybody's situation is a little bit different. So the first thing we're going to talk about is determining what somebody's financial situation is. We don't get into your finances, but your mortgage lender does. So that's the first thing we're going to talk about. Then we're going to talk about coordinating timing and how this all has to happen and the process. And some of that depends upon whether you, somebody has to be out of town by a certain time or whether they've already bought something. The third thing we're going to talk about is selling your home and preparing that home and marketing it effectively, and then buying the new home and you know working with a realtor and making sure we line everything up there. We're gonna talk about when you're buying the new home, what kinds of contingencies you should be putting in the offers perhaps and how we can uh, negotiate to mm -hmm. assist you with all that. We're gonna talk about the closing process. We're gonna talk about moving. And then finally, just settling in and following up with you. So, Mary Ellen, let's start with determining somebody's financial situation. Okay, like I said, I don't I don't get involved in that. We do not get involved. All we do <laughs> is we talk to the lender, can can they buy first and then we can sell or do they need the monies from the house that they're selling to buy? Right. And remember also this is not only if you're buying and selling in the metro atlanta area we might have a sell here and they're 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 buying in texas and then we might have someone selling in florida that's buying here so we really have to communicate with it's if it's a buy and sell in atlanta it's us if it's a buy and sell some other place we're working with another agent like really closely in the transaction so that we know exactly. And everyone's deal is different and everybody's situation is different. So we have to look at that and come up with like a plan on how right. we're going to do it. So one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that Mary Ellen and I are network across the entire country and we can refer you to a great realtor to assist you with buying and selling in another city. And so we can coordinate that and keep communication open with them as well. And then the other part of that, like Mary Ellen touched on, is the pre-approval process. It's so important that, you know, you meet with and talk to, you know, a, a qualified mortgage lender. We can refer you to some lenders that we do think do a great job and they can assist you with you know where you are financially and how this can work as to whether you need to sell first or whether you can go ahead and buy first yeah so, I wanna, yeah i was gonna say like sue i'm gonna tell you a story that just kind of happened recently where also you need to talk to your cpa and your financial mm -hmm. planner because mm -hmm. we had somebody who was retired and they wanted the proceeds from their house to buy the other house, but then they found that they went somewhere and they found the house of their dreams. So we hadn't even listed the house. So then they decided they were going to take their money out of their retirement fund or whatever they were going to do to purchase cash and do all this mm -hmm. stuff. So I think it's also a matter of things also can change within your situation and just mm -hmm. inform us of how that's how you're going to do that. Because right. they were going to finance, then they weren't going to finance, then they were going to take the money from here and there. So you really just have to also have a good team on your side of a lender, a financial person, and a CPA to figure out what's best for your financial position. I just want right. to add that, Sue. So. Right. Yeah. The tax laws are key with a lot of this um, type of thing as well. And so we can't emphasize enough using a professional to give you the right answers and the right advice. Yeah, exactly. 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 So pre-qualifying, figuring out that's like the number one. Right. right. 
So costs involved with all of that. Okay, they're pre-qualified. So what are the costs involved here? We've got some closing costs, which really do vary based upon whether somebody's financing or not financing. If you're paying cash, your closing costs are going to be a lot lower than if you're using a lender. Um, and so you also have to calculate in, you know, your financial situation. Do you, how much money do you have for a down payment? And do you have that money without selling your other home? Also, moving expenses can vary widely as to whether you're doing a local move, uh, an intermediate distant move, or a cross-country move. Well, and an international you know, move, which costs a fortune. Right, right, right. And do you have your employer picking up the tab for all of that or a portion of that can make a very big difference. So um, we want you to avoid surprises is what we're saying. And we want you to think ahead and plan for all of these different things and really um, get a couple different estimates, talk to a couple different mortgage lenders perhaps, and get the best product and the best um, situation that fits your needs. Yeah. And, you know, there's always costs involved in, in everything. And, and if you are financing something, the lender's going to give you an estimated cost of what things cost. Um, if you're paying cash, if you're a buyer, you're going to, you're going to pay in Georgia. If you're buying in Georgia, then you pay for attorney fees and then you pay your, uh, transfer tax. And then you also, depending on when the taxes, the property taxes were paid, you get a debit or credit HOA fees, debit or credit, you know, um, there's going to be some wiring fees and some other fees put in there. Um, not, a, not a ton, but honestly, your lender is the one that's going to give you all those fees to, to look at. Right, right. And what people don't understand is that we also have something called an intangible tax. An intangible tax is a tax on the amount that you're mortgaging. So it's just something to consider when you're thinking about, do I want a small mortgage or do I want to pay cash? Yeah. And like I said, that's always your team, your financial, like we kind of get all over that. But remember, like the costs involved of moving. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, if if you also need somebody to help you pack and movers to pack, and then if you need um, uh, like somebody just help you, you know, um, right. that's another added cost that can cost right. a good amount. Just bringing in a professional to help you pack, you know, could, right. could cost a good amount of money. Have you gone into Lowe's lately or Home Depot lately and looked at the price of a box? Oh my and God. Calculated how many boxes you need to move? That can be daunting in itself. Oh, yes, absolutely. But I, I will tell you a trick, okay? Trick of the trade is go to liquor stores and get boxes. Those are great for like your. Uh, dishes because you it, it's like you don't want them to be so heavy right so you've got like the liquor boxes and stuff and they're always wanting to get a, get rid of liquor boxes so go and get liquor mm -hmm. boxes that's a really good trick especially if you're trying to save costs on on boxes but right. yes you can order boxes online you can order boxes at lowe's home depot you know boxes are everywhere but honestly and tape Oh my God. Don't forget about tape, <laughs> taping those things up and, and bubble like that bubble wrap stuff that all the kids <laughs> like to press on. That's awesome. Or right. don't put in those, those little, I don't know, those, what are they called? The, the little white things that are, are the peanuts, the peanuts, peanuts, no way. Peanuts are a pain <laughs> in my butt. Don't ever put those in there. Peanuts <laughs> are the worst. I, I, I do not like them at all. They make a mess <laughs> everywhere of your house, of your yard. Uh, yeah, no. No, use bubble wrap, okay? Everybody right. Use bubble wrap. And, and I've, and I've seen people try to just minimize the number of boxes that they have and just buy all the large boxes. Well, what <gasps> oh, happens yeah. there is those large boxes get too heavy to pick up. So well, that's why I say go out. Best, best tip of the day, go to the liquor stores right. and get boxes from them. Right. And you know what? We all get stuff from Amazon. Those are good. Amazon's mm -hmm. sell, sending all kinds of boxes. Right. So, you know, save some of those or ask, you know, ask your neighbors friend. and friends to save boxes for you too. Yeah. And find out, you know, if somebody's recently moved into your neighborhood, do they have boxes left over that you could either buy off them or they could give to you? Um, those are good options too. Some people, you know, will put a post out on their next door app saying, Hey, I'm about to move. Does anybody have any boxes for me? And people will say, yeah, I just moved in a month ago. I want to get rid of these things They, you know, so uh, not me. I, I, when I get rid of those boxes, as soon as I unload it, the box is out in the garbage. I'm sorry. I can't. <laughs> I, can't. I, I mean, I know people like 
save boxes in their basement and uh, I don't, I don't do that. No, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm just too, I can't do it. So anyway, so costs involved. I mean, you know, there's always going to be those costs, get three estimates from movers, movers are, are all over the place, just like any other kind of vendor. So just look at that. Uh, if you have to transport your car somewhere, Oh, even I, I got a great story. I had a cl some clients, older clients that were moving from across country. They were moving from Georgia all the way to Seattle area. So that's a long, and they were going to take their car and their kitty cats and everybody in there. And no, they didn't, didn't end up doing that. They ended up finding someone to drive their car. They ended up finding someone to take their kitty cats because um, there was just too much stress. So, right. you know, considerations when you're doing like those type of things, it costs money, but there are people that will drive your car from Atlanta to Maine or Atlanta right. to Chicago. And there, um, there's definitely there are transport services. services that will put your car on, you know, one of the big tractor trailers and move it for you. And they'll give you a drop off point and a date when you can pick the car up again on the other end. But remember like those, um, you know, those animals too cost money. Like if you have to, like when you're, when you got the movers there, you don't want your animals around. So either you have a friend to take care of them or you put them in doggy daycare or whatever you do just to, you know, so that they're not stressed out too. So right. those are some other costs. All right, let's go so, into. So how do we talk, how do we coordinate the timing of all this, Mary Ellen? Oh, kind of timing. To head here, but, you know, we need to coordinate the dates of the sale of my current home and the date of my new home that I'm purchasing. It's called a lot of juggling. That's what it's called. And a lot of negotiation and a lot of win-win situations. So ultimately things can, you know, there's always things that can happen, right? So we're ultimately finding out your timeline and we're adjusting your timeline. And especially if you're, if you're moving from another state to here, we're coordinating and learning their laws to make sure that we can make it a smooth, smooth, smooth transaction. And we've had some that, you know, there was a snowstorm and the money didn't get over to the, you know, we have one of those, right? Sue, where, where right. there was a snowstorm. We did have a snowstorm, not here, but in the state where our buyers that were buying here, they were selling their home in another state and they had a snowstorm and it delayed the closing there, which created kind of a domino effect here right. on this end. Right. And that's happens. another thing you have to, sometimes there's a whole ripple effect that it's mm -hmm. affecting six families or whatever. So right. you have to look at all that timing and just really, I think communication is really important about the timing. Right. I think you always have to be open to adjusting mm -hmm. and you just the communication on, you know, and there will be things that happen. Like we didn't like a snowstorm. We didn't know that was going to happen, but a snowstorm happened and the, the monies didn't get to where they needed to be. So we had to do a dry closing and then have a temporary occupancy for our clients. And then it hurt the other ripple effects. So, you know, right. the ripple effect can really uh, be, be tough. So right. we're here to, to problem. I think we're problem shooters. Don't, I we mean, are. I think that's we, we are. We're <laughs> psychiatrists and problem shooters. So when it comes to timing, we just kind of just deal with the timing on that. Right. We, we've also had the situation where there's somebody that's coming from out of state, their home hasn't sold yet out of state, but they want to buy a house here, but maybe that house isn't ready to settle yet. So we have to find them temporary housing. And there are uh, locations here in the Metro Atlanta area where we can find housing for somebody for you know less than a month and it's furnished or we can even find them something that's you know two three maybe six months of temporary housing and you know it's really up to them as to whether they want to have that furnished by a, you know court furniture rental or brooks furniture mm -hmm. rental or whether they want to bring some of their own furniture and temporarily furnish that property as well but we do have those interim housing options here and it's not necessarily that somebody has to stay in a hotel but um we can find short-term apartments here um you know, on a month to month basis, they're not cheap, but they do serve a purpose right. and can be quite useful when they're needed. And a lot of people will go to a hotel or they'll do an Airbnb too. And, and you have to take that into effect when the movers take all your stuff out there's, mm -hmm. and you're closing the next day, where are you going to sleep? 
with your friends or you're not going to sleep on the floor. You know, I mean, well, some people do, I, I, you know, <laughs> but what I'm saying is you have to take that into effect. The movers come and there's nothing left in the house and you have the cleaners coming and you're cleaning the house. What do you do? You know, you're staying with your friends or whatever, or a hotel or Airbnb. So people are, and then if you have animals, you have to take that into consideration right. too. Right. So just, we, we had a situation yeah. about a year ago where um, our sellers, the home was closing, everything was going like clockwork. And then we found out at the 29th hour that the new construction home that they were moving into wasn't quite ready yet because it didn't pass an inspection to get the CO. And so some work had to be done on the house. And it was only a situation of two or three days, but two or three days is a problem when somebody doesn't have a place to sleep. So, you know, we had to intervene at the last moment and, you know, give them some assistance as far as places to mm -hmm. stay and that sort of thing. And it all worked out. Everybody, you know, ultimately got to where they needed to be. We had to delay the mover and leave the uh, belongings on the truck for two or three days longer, which there was an expense to that. But, um, you know, there's always a solution. Yeah. Always solutions. We're mm -hmm. problem shooters and this is fun. Okay. What's, what's next after that timing? Yeah. Yeah. So if somebody is on this end, they want to sell their home, what do we need to do to get that home ready? Do we, you know, what are the first steps, Mary Ellen? What in, in uh, selling your home? Yeah. I mean, you have to make sure it's, it's, it's ready to show, ready to go and, uh, ready to go, ready to show and go. Um, right. So that's just here. So we're, we're, we're getting your house in the market and we're like, we can't predict that it's, it could take two days. It could take 10 days. It could take whatever. So good example on saying that is I've got clients who are going to be moving from Tennessee to here and they're putting the house in the market on Thursday and they're, you know, super excited. And they're like, I, so I said to him, well, I, I know their agent and I, I talked to the agent and I said, so what are the average days in the market? Well, they go, it could be anywhere from two to 30 to 60. And I was like, yeah, we don't know. Right? right. So you, we have to try to coordinate and they're all excited because they have to, they need the money to, from the sell to the buy. So mm -hmm. we have to coordinate it like to a T um, and they're like, and I'm like, well, I, you know, once you have your house under contract, that's when you come here and we find a house for you because right. we can't do it in any other way. That's just the right. way you have to do it. So, yeah. Right. So to get that house on the market, to get it sold quickly, we always emphasize what I call the three Ds of real estate. And those are the deep cleaning, the depersonalization, and the decluttering of the home, just so that it shows its best. And then, you know, pricing the home is the next step that we have to take into consideration to get that home sold for the most amount of money in the least amount of time. And, you know, sometimes we have very difficult discussions sometimes with the sellers if they want to sell it for one price and yet all all the market stats aren't showing that, that that's what the house would, would necessarily go for. Because remember too, a house also has to appraise. And so that's a whole nother discussion for a whole nother podcast, I think. <laughs> but um, we could tell you stories all day long about appraisals. But ultimately then once we get it on the market, it comes down to marketing it effect effectively through social media channels, through you know contacting agents where they have a match in the MLS system mm -hmm. as far as they've got a client that their criteria matches what we're selling this particular home. And we we also do a lot with you know open houses and you know, everything else and videos and walkthroughs and virtual tours and all just to get as many buyers exposed to a property so that it'll sell quickly. Especially when you know their timeline too. And sometimes right. you have to have, you have to look like, uh, and we love when people need to buy and sell and they have to be somewhere because the motivation is totally there. Mm -hmm. So we're really straight shooters. We tell them, you know, we can see this is the way it's going to, this is the way it's the market's doing. This is what it's doing this week. We can't predict, put it on the market. Then, you know, every week we're going to adjust it or look at it and see what's going on in the market because you need to get to California and we need to sell this house. So mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of, kind of what the sell. And I guess we go into the buying side is, mm -hmm. you know, um, we're going to know what you need. We're, I mean, we've doing, doing our research ahead of time. So if you're, if you're moving from one area to another here in Atlanta, you know, we, we've been, uh, you've drive driving neighborhoods, you know, where you want to be. 
uh, what I tell people is give me a list, you know, cause like, you know, everybody's on Zillow and they're on realtor.com and um, especially people coming from other parts of the country. Um, I said, you know, I'm happy to give you an MLS search to your criteria. Send me what you like. So then I know what they like. So I put a criteria mm -hmm. together. And then mm -hmm. what I said is we just start this whole big list. If you like something, send it to me, text it to me. Then we just keep writing the list because we don't know if that property is still going to be available right. when they're ready to, when they're ready to come and visit and do their, once their house is under contract through due diligence, and then we have to, you know, find them and not to stress, we're going to find you something. You're not going to be homeless. We're here <laughs> to comfort you and help you in that, in that direction. That's right. kind of, and everybody likes to do it differently. So that's why I always ask my clients, do you want me to send you all the listings or are you like spinning your wheels on Zillow every night and realtor.com or whatever, or one of our, or the KW website, you know, what are you looking at every, every day? Or I, our think, website too? I think what's key that helps relieve a lot of stress to buyers is that they can get overdone very, very easily. So I always say, have your, your top five and no more than 10 must haves. And one of those must haves is in your budget as far as that needs to be a line item as to what your budget is, as far as your top, you know, five or 10 criteria. And keep that separate from, you know, like your wish list. Needs and wants, you know, are two different things. Let's stick with the needs. And then, you know, within the, the couple homes that we narrow this down to, you can maybe weave in a few of your wants at that point to pick yes. the best home out of that final list. Yeah. And and, and, it, and it's a, just another juggling act. We're just, I think we're jugglers too. So we could just take some <laughs> balls and throw them in the, in, in the air too, because we're all always juggling, you know, is this property available? Because, you know, five minutes later, it could not be available and they really want to, that's their number one. So Sue, you have a great story about our clients who came from just recently from Mississippi and they came here. Mm -hmm. And right. uh, I think that's a perfect example of what we are talking about here. Right. So we had a family that had lived in the Atlanta area before, so they knew a little bit about where they wanted to live. They had some family still here in the area that they wanted to be within a certain number of miles of their family. And so they were being relocated with their job and they had a very short time frame uh, to be able to pick a house. And so the, this was a situation where they definitely needed to sell before they could buy. So we waited until their home was under contract. And then once we knew that their home was past due diligence and it was definitely pending and it was definitely going to close and we knew a definite closing date of what they needed, we were able then to have them come into the Metro Atlanta area. We looked at, you know, for about a week before they arrived, we had sent them a lot of homes to look at. And actually they had narrowed it to three homes and said, we know these are the only three homes we need to look at. And I'm like, that's great. I love it when you know, a buyer is <laughs> decisive and they know what they want. So we go to the these three homes and I had scheduled their number one choice first. And I could tell by the look on their faces, the pictures were not you know, a direct reflection of what the house actually felt like once they got in it. And I could tell, you know, their faces went down and they were really disappointed. And I'm like, okay, let's look at the other two. We looked at the other two and they're like, Sue, this isn't going to get it done. We need a house in the next two days. So um, fortunately, <laughs> I had a backup list of homes that I thought might work with that for them. And I was able to get on the phone with some of those agents, one in particular. And she's like, well, come over today. You know, my, my buyers are home, but I'll call them and I'm sure they'll, they'll be happy to, to have you come in. We were in and within 10 minutes, those buyers knew that that was the home for them and it all worked out. But sometimes we have to pull a rabbit out of the hat. Sometimes we have to be extremely We're magicians. Uh, magicians. We're jugglers. We're magicians. What else are we? I mean, we're... We're, we are multitaskers is what we really <laughs> are. So it's really important for us as agents to have that backup list too, right. that I, I do the same thing. And I, when I talk to people, I just say, well, I also like to see what you like. And then I kind of, 
uh, would it be okay if I suggest some stuff? So I always have that in the, like, like you said, to pull the rabbits out of the hat, we have that too as well. So I, I think that was a good story to tell so that people can understand about buying and selling and how, it, and I think how important it is to have a great agent who understands your needs and wants and also can pulls, you know, can also look at stuff that maybe they looked at and said, no, I don't think so. But since you're on boots on the ground and you know the area that you were able to, to do that. That's a, that's right. a great story. And I think what's key here that Mary Ellen's mentioned is having a really good realtor. You really need to be working with a realtor. Um, buyers that aren't working with a realtor really aren't serious in my opinion. I mean, we recently had a situation where we had a buyer place an offer um, on one of our listings. Um, that particular buyer um, really thought they knew what they were doing because they've bought and sold homes over the years, well, that does not qualify you to be a licensed agent in the state of Georgia. We go through hours and hours and hours of education and continuing education, mm -hmm. even after yeah. licensing, to be able to do what we do. Mm -hmm. And the laws yeah. are changing and so forth. And the, the climate's changing. And it's very um, important that you know, buyers understand this and that buyers also are not necessarily, now this is changing a little bit too, but buyers don't necessarily pay the commission to the agent they're working with, that that buyer's agent is generally, and I don't say always, but that buyer's agent is generally paid uh, by the seller. Yeah. And um, that percentage does vary um, by home. And that's all decided at the time that the seller signs a listing agreement with that particular realtor that's going to list that home. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So buying your new home, I think we really touched that coordinating everything. Um, and then knowing like contingencies and offers. So mm -hmm. we have to juggle that depending on their financial situation. Right. You right. Know, so we might have to put a home sale contingency on the, the this purchase of this new home is contingent upon the successful close of our buyer's current home that is listed, it is under contract, it is at this address, and here's the listing agent's name and phone number. You can call them and find out what the status is and also follow up on that all the way to the day of closing. But so when, um, when we're in multiple offers, which mm -hmm. the market has been like that in the past years, it's very, very difficult. So mm -hmm. we have to also problem shoot another solution in that aspect. So putting in those contingencies, um, we also can, you know, people know that they have to buy in, the, in order to sell, to buy, they need to sell. We also can look at other things of maybe houses that have been on the market a little longer. So right. we have to also, that's another hurdle where here we go. Now we're, now we're track runners. Here's another hurdle that we have to go over to, to meet um, the criteria to help them purchase that right. we we have to think outside of the box a lot and be very creative and flexible. And we also have to think that way too when we're negotiating the terms for our client because ultimately our goal is to protect our clients. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then let's go to like the closing process. So we're, we're you know, and, and I think the best thing that we can say to everyone is take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're doing yoga now. So this is great. <laughs> so we'll take a deep breath and let us tell you how the timeline's going to work. Okay. And if you're you're closing on your property, your monies can be totally wired to the attorney's office that's taking care of the closing on the buy side. So I think that we're making it easy. We're going to make sure that the funds don't go back to you and then you bring them. So I think that's, that's, that's number one is that we can have that money wired from one attorney's office to the other or title company to attorney's office. Cause mm -hmm. in the state of Georgia, we do attorneys, but other States do title. So the mm -hmm. monies can be transferred. That's the number. I think that's one of the number one reason way that people get all freaked out and, they need to calm themselves and take some deep breaths about right. it. There's financial. A, there's, a, there's a lot that we do behind the scenes that people don't 
realize that we do as realtors. And it's a coordination process with other professionals such as attorneys and paralegals and even you know mortgage lenders and their processors and their closers and you know both we're, we've worked always working with other professionals such as the appraiser and every everybody else to get everything smoothly to the closing table. And we're also in communication with perhaps individuals that have done repairs on the property too, to get the receipts so that that can, you know, we can stay organized and get everything to the closing table so that we can close on time and make it a very smooth process. And it's, it's one of the things I think we should do a podcast on the 400 things that we do behind the scenes that nobody <laughs> ever sees. It'd be more yeah. than that. It would just be like, or the, the, the careers that we do were yoga teachers, were musicians, <laughs> were jugglers, were, you know, psych psychiatrists. Scientists. A lot of times. <laughs> yeah, we, we do a lot of that kind of stuff. So yeah, so you've got the closing and we're going to make it as, you know, and, and we've had, you know, the movers are in the, you know, at the, at the, the street ready to move things in or we close, you know, so just coordinating all that stuff, I think is, is just something that we just help you do. And, and we've been through it multiple times. So, you know, let's not, you know, call us communications important. Right. Right. Like, and if you feel like you're stressed out and you want to talk to us, just talk and vent out and we'll we listen. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times our clients are calling us and these movers or this or that, or, you know, I'm I'm all stressed out. I'm like, don't worry about it. It's all gonna work yeah. out. And, I'll and do everything we'll, in my power. In addition to strategically packing, so you know which boxes have to be unpacked first, we'll also give you guidance on setting up your utilities and who you need to call. Oh yeah, because that's, that's all part too. of the process too. There's just so many different things that are involved here. Yeah, and we don't. We definitely want the utilities on. We've had, right. you know, I right. tell everybody when I give them like the buyers okay, please make sure you have these on, even put them on earlier, whatever you need to do, because if it's over a weekend, like you close on a Friday, some people forget to do the utilities because they're so like, mm-hmm. and I can't do it for you, right? All I can do is give you the information, right? And we've had times, you know, I'm like, I tell them, you want utilities, you want water, you want electricity on the weekend. So please make sure you put it day of closing. So you have it. Right. So yeah, right. right. So just those little tidbits. Um uh, then follow up. What's, what about follow up? I mean, we're following up to make sure that the transaction goes smooth on both sides. Right. Right. And we, we also want to remind our buyers and sellers, especially our buyers that, you know, your, your deed is being filed through the closing attorney's office and, you know, They can either give you a copy of that or we can give you a copy of that. But if you get this piece of junk mail that says, oh, pay us $10 and we'll get you your deed. No, it's junk mail. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's like all those robo robo calls and everything Mm -hmm. else you're getting. And a lot of people get as soon as you close on a house, for some reason, your information gets out there to everybody and anything. And you're going to get tons of mail, like a lot of mail. Right. But post-closing, I do get a lot of phone calls from my clients, mostly, oh, I forgot my dog needs to go to the vet. Do you have a vet you could recommend? Or, you know, I chipped a tooth. I need to go to the dentist. Do you have a dentist you could recommend? Or where can I go to buy blinds? Or I need to buy draperies. Where do? What do you recommend? A lot of people just need a little bit of guidance sometimes as to those go-to numbers. Uh, Carpet's a big one. Flooring's a big one that I I get questions about. Recommendations for painters and other, you know, vendors or contractors that can assist you with changing the locks or changing the windows cleaned, things like that. Yeah. So yeah. So we're the go-to ladies of real estate, you know, like, you know, just give us a call We're we'll send you in the right direction. Um, Sometimes we give you multiple people and we, you know, like I said, we have clients who've had great experiences and not great experiences and you know we just we give you the information and you've got to do your due diligence but at least you have it and I, i'd be like well right. i personally use these people they're awesome you know right. so right. um we're, we're kind of the go-to vendors any kind of vendors you need just let us know and right. then after exactly. the transaction too it's just kind of like we're here like you mm-hmm. said if you need something you need a landscaper you need you know any painter right. or whatever we're here for you as well 
So mm-hmm. just in, in all of this guidance. So yeah. I think we kind of tackled this, this, um, this fun, uh, fun topic because I think a lot of people are nervous when they're buying and selling at the same time Mm -hmm. because most, most of their concerns are about timing and being, and being homeless, you know? Right. We've never left anybody homeless yet. No, we don't intend to, (laughs) but we are here and ask, call us and ask us any questions that you have. We're, We're a great support team, if nothing else, and we'll give you the best guidance we can. Yeah. Well, thanks for this, uh, this really fun time we had. We're the real estate lady of North Atlanta, Mary Ellen Vinokin, Susan Jennings. Have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.